Guys, what's up? So a lot of us struggle with uh, getting deep into a squat position. And it's, you know, I used to be an accountant back in the day, so I used to sit a lot. And sometimes I do find myself sitting a lot. So we're always in this position and our hips start to feel tight. Um, our feet start to like go outwards a little bit. So we don't have as much hip mobility, right? So this warm up is going to be dedicated how to get more depth for your squat. Instead of just moving your hips randomly, kicking legs side to side, we're going to do specific exercises to build that depth. Um, so generally you can start your warm up with like maybe walking outside, treadmill, making sure you're visualizing in terms of what movements you'll be doing in the workout. And this is more specific to the squat. So if the squat's the first movement you'll be doing, this is the process I want you to go through to open up some depth and then see how your squats feel, okay? So the first thing is pigeon pose. This one, two sets, eight to 12 breaths. Um, when you do this movement, some days you might feel great. Some days it may feel a little more tighter, right? So let me spend more time here, maybe do three sets. Just go based on feel a little bit, but two sets, eight to 12. You can also do a couch stretch. Um, the main thing here is push your inside of the knee into the box and breathe into your hips, okay? Eight to 12 times. Nice inhale, nice exhale. I don't want this tense breath where you're breathing upwards, like I want you to breathe into the diaphragm and the stomach, okay? Eight to 12 times, nice and relaxed. Get the hips moving a little bit. You can lean forward a little bit if you feel like a deeper stretch that way, but don't exaggerate it, right? You just want to get in that range of motion. So this is the first movement. Now we're going to do something dynamic that gets the hips moving side to side. It's going to be a hip rotation, AKA arm bar. Okay, so let's get into that. The arm bar, if you haven't checked out the upper body day, we kind of went over this and this, that one as well, but this one gets the hips moving, shoulders moving, which is also important when you're getting a squat position, right? You want to make sure your shoulders are nice and mobile. So a couple things here, two sets, eight to 12 breaths, inhale at the start while the forearm's facing your head and reach above, and then start to externally rotate the shoulder as you rotate the hips. And major key here is this leg stays straight the whole time, okay? Come back, exhale on the way back, inhale on the way down, okay? Do one more. There you go, eight to 12 times and you should be chilling, yeah? Guys, so the third movement is gonna be a single leg wall RDL. Major thing here is take your shoes off. Honestly, if your gym allows the whole leg day, I would just keep the shoes off, unless you're on some platforms that don't feel comfortable. But if you can just do shoes off, it's gonna be really beneficial because we get used to pushing the full foot in the ground, right? A lot of us, because we have shoes on, we have some biases, like we end up pushing to the outside or being on our toes, things like that. So take your shoes off. Um, the second thing here is have a wall or some sort of box to keep that back foot on so you're more stable. The reason for the stability is so we can keep our pelvis in a neutral position. If there's no stability, we end up twisting a lot, which is not ideal when you're going into a squat form, right? So push that back foot and then push that front foot into the ground, slight bend in both legs. And now from this position, think about how you would do an RDL and think about pushing your hips back towards the box. And then just stop and then up. When you come up, think about pushing into the ground with that front foot, the big toe and the inside foot, and stop going down once your hips have stopped going back, right? A lot of us, we push our hips back and then we go down like this. We're using our low back for that case, right? So once your hips have stopped going back, come back up. This one, I want you to do two sets, eight to 12 reps, but really, really slow eccentric, meaning on the way down nice and slow. Almost think like a three to four second count, okay? That's it. Guys, so the fourth movement, this is gonna be probably the best movement for the squat itself. We're gonna do a goblet squat with some weight in front of us. The reason for the weight being here instead of behind us, now what's gonna happen is it's gonna push us back a little bit. Because a lot of us, when we squat, we end up folding forward. And likelihood of that's happening if you're struggling with your squat depth, right? So this is, the weight's gonna push you back. The second major thing is the heel elevation. It's okay to use some heel elevation. I even use it for my barbell squatting because a lot of us don't have that range of motion at the bottom, the ankle mobility, and this will actually improve it because you're doing something in a loaded fashion, right? So major things here is first obviously set the elevation right how you would squat. I keep it just hip width facing straight. The second thing is grab some lightweight, nothing crazy. Make sure your big toe is pushed on the ground. The heel is on the elevation. Bring the elbows up like you're doing a plank, right? And now think about just sitting down. Keep the heel pressure, heel pressure, pause at the bottom, and then up. 
So this should not be fatiguing at all. It should just help you get in the range of motion. And again, this movement will really tell you how your depth is gonna feel in the squat. So if the first set just feels amazing, you feel great, maybe just go squat afterwards. But if this feels a little bit, you know, sticky, maybe do two to three sets, get in that range, open up some range of motion, okay? Guys, so that was obviously the warm up. Um, hopefully that helps your squat, squat depth. But the major key here is after you do that in that exa exact order, is your hips should feel better. But then when you do your normal barbell squat, uh, make sure you do your normal warm up sets there too. Just jump to your main working set. So the way I would set up something, it's like, say your working sets are gonna be two plates, 225 pounds. Maybe start off at the bar, 10 to 15 reps, right? Nice and controlled, get in that position. Second, maybe do 45 each side, right? eight to 10 reps, nothing too intense. Maybe 185 for like three reps, and then you can jump to 225. Or you can also do like 205 for like one rep, and then do your main set. Depends how it feels, but make sure you do your warm up sets in the movement itself, because the best warm up is gonna be the movement, obviously, but these are movements that are gonna help you create that range of motion a little bit better, okay? So hopefully you guys enjoyed the juicy warm up, and any questions, comment below. Anything else you guys wanna see? Comment below and uh, anything to add? Jacked. Bye bye.